We've got a bonus episode of the podcast. It's a Saturday. We what? don't normally do a Saturday episode. We've never done a set. Except for July. Except for July. This is the first ever August Saturday episode <laughs> of all time. Look, it's draft weekend. Your draft is right here right now. So we wanted to bring you a special episode talking about the do's and don'ts of fantasy drafts, answering your draft strategy questions, and getting you ready to go. Because I know you got your ultimate draft kit it's at ultimatedraftkit.com. And now we're going to do some uh, we're going to do some question and answer and help you out. So enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, it's an episode on a Saturday. A bonus. Bonus. A little something special for the Foot Clan. You guys have been gearing up for your drafts, and we want to help. I mean, we've got our main draft tomorrow, and we know what it's like. We we aren't we aren't just analysts. We are hardcore fantasy football players. We know what this time of year means mm -hmm. to everyone who's listening, and so we're like more. And if you <laughs> more, if, if you were out there listening, more. If we were you, more, we would want more. And so that's what we got: a bonus episode of the Fantasy Footballers. So welcome in. And I am me, and I want more of me. To, you you, about you right. certainly do. So we're going to focus today's episode on draft strategy, the most pressing draft questions that you guys sent in, some do's and don'ts, things that we've learned over the years. And, um, you know, I said it at the top, hopefully, as you are getting ready for your draft, you got the UDK. Yeah, I mean, the ultimate draft kit, we've we've made it better and better over the years. Uh, if, if you've had it before, I know you've got it this year because – uh, you've, you've experienced it, but the UDK plus now that's available, we can, if you've got your trade, this, your, your draft this weekend, we can grade your team, um, analyze what you need to do to move forward, your strengths, your weaknesses, uh, those things. And now we have the ability to, uh, mark players drafted, uh, highlighted, mm -hmm. avoid, um, right in the app, right on web. It's, it's just outstanding. Yeah, and like you said, the draft analyzer is brand new this year. Learn more about the Ultimate Draft Kit by heading to ultimatedraftkit.com. It is not too late. In fact, this weekend, next weekend, the most popular weekends for picking up the UDK. People are cramming. They're, they they want to win their draft, set the foundation for the year, and ultimately come home with that uh, championship trophy. So uh, a couple reminders at the top. You can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. The website's thefantasyfootballers.com. Mike has his Ultimate Value Hit Squad oh, article. Oh, baby. That's coming out on the website soon. I've got my 32 Bold Predictions article coming out once again. And uh, we have our Bold Predictions episode out on Tuesday. So if you're just joining us, if this is somehow your first episode, we're a five-day-a-week podcast. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and uh, follow us throughout the year. We're going to help you win. Welcome to the party. It's going to be a good time. Now, Mike, those pipes better be ready. We're, we're going right into it. Bumblebee, bumble. Okay, go. Mailbag Saturday. Very nice. Very nice. If you have a question for the show, you can always go to the website, fantasyfootballers.com, click the submit a question button, or dial the voicemail hotline 302 464 TFFB. I have noticed now, Brooks and Al both here. Brooks, I've noticed we haven't had as many voicemail questions since you decided to air somebody's Ooh. messed up voicemail question. Because there, there's some nerves out there, I think. How do you feel about that? That's just a one-time thing. Okay. That's We're not going to do that? a one-time special moment. Yeah. I hope not. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't worry. You're Go safe here. Call in. You're sa it's a safe space. Well, now, why are you winking while you say that? <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't make do any you have sense. Something you know the people can't see you, right? <laughs> All right. On Twitter, let's start here. Zach writes in and says, I have the 102, and I plan to take Dalvin Cook. Jefferson is around the turn. Is it a bad idea to take two players from the same team with my first two picks? I would be taking Jefferson over Waller, Keenan, McLaurin, Carson, 
Um, very common question, right? People want to know. They want to know, is it okay? Am I going to be okay if I take two players on the same team? Right. So when it comes to two players from the same team, a quarterback and a wide receiver, that is the preferred way to go about it. Don't force the quarterback stack like you're drafting them you know, two rounds ahead of their ADP just because you really want to have this stack and that explosion of points. It, don't force the stack. Yes, don't force the stack. Let it, let it, let it, the stack fall Come to, to you. you. Let the stack. I mean, stacks fall down, right? Sure. Sometimes okay. if they're too high. But anyways, the point, back to the Is real the milk question. milk carton thing? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit it was in my head. Uh, but a running back and a wide receiver, they're not going to score on the exact same play. You're capping your upside on a weekly basis. And it's difficult when you're talking elite players like Dalvin Cook and Justin Jefferson. That's going to be the majority of the Vikings points, uh, it, at least the way that I'm projecting. And I know Adam Thielen is there, but you have the same thing with the Cowboys, Zeke and CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper. Do you put those guys together? To me, in those early rounds, I don't prefer it, especially because there's other good players there. You Waller is a great pick this year. Keenan Allen is ranked just right around Justin Jefferson for me. So if I could pivot to a different team, try and capture their touchdowns on on both teams on any given week, that's the way I'd prefer to do yeah, it. Yeah, in, in those early rounds, it's not like if you avoid Justin Jefferson, you're ruined. You, he's right. the only guy. You know, when you're drafting uh, Dalvin Cook, Calvin Ridley is a lot of times yes. there for you in the second round. That I mean, I prefer Calvin Ridley, but you know, that's a great pivot so that you don't have that stack. Or alternatively, if you are someone that is like, I just have to have Justin Jefferson. I want him bad, but I'm at the two and I'm worried about that stack. Uh, you could go Alvin Kamara at the at the two if you're worried about that stack. But I, I think the right thing uh, to do is just look at other options in that second round because all the players there are are very good. And obviously, if you have a stack of players, that offense can't have an off week or you're going to have an off week as a fantasy team. So right. the only times that I do that, you know, with out fear is an offense that I think won't really have more than one bad week on the year. Yeah, you'd uh, rather do that with the Chiefs offense right. than with the Vikings yep. defense first, uh, not a prolific I offense. I guess there really aren't, when you think about it, other than the Cowboys with like Zeke and one of their wideouts. And this situation with Cook and Jefferson, like you're not going to end up with Devontae Adams and Aaron Jones. Like that You could end up with Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Fine with it, because I know Michael Thomas is coming in the fifth, sixth round at that point. Right. So um all right, let's move on. Let's move on. Twitter Grant writes in and says, first time in a fourteen team league, which is a larger league. What mm -hmm. should I do differently for my draft? Well, first, uh, if you did make it into the Fantasy Footballers Listener League, uh, this is the time where you turn off uh, your podcast. <laughs> it's, wait, it's Grant? A, it's a 14-teamer, and we don't want you knowing any strategy that will help you win um, now that they have left. Uh, <laughs> of course. I, when I am in a 14-team league, I am much later uh, with quarterback and tight end. I feel that the depth at running back and wide receiver – it dries up quick, and as the season goes on, it is hard to find quality options in a 14-team league. Quarterbacks, we know they're replaceable. I think the real question comes at tight end, whether or not you really want that advantage because it is so hard and there's so few tight ends. The way I look at it is the entire league sucks at tight end, mm -hmm. other, than, other than the three teams that got the three big guys. So most of my matchups, I'm going to be about the same at tight end as my opponent almost every single week uh, outside of those top three matchups. So I would rather have an extra running back, an extra wide receiver uh, from those early yeah, rounds. Yeah, because those thin out so quickly. I If you flip it the other way and you go to a 10-team league, like 12 is the standard, but now you shrink it up, that's when I'm more prone to grab, like even – like, we've been aggressive about the top three tight ends. Mm -hmm. I'd be more aggressive in a 10 or even an eight-team league. People play in those. We mm -hmm. always say, I'd rather play in an eight-team league with seven other managers that actually care than forcing my league up to 10 with two guys that ignore the roster and don't play. But do you agree with that? Would you yeah. kind of force the issue in those ones? And would you force it more at quarterback, I guess, is a question, because – Tight ends, maybe you do, but do you do that with the quarterback position as well, knowing that 
if you have the top a top two, top three quarterback, you do have a big advantage. You do, but we've talked about the the safety of early round quarterbacks and that it's it's not a guarantee that you take Lamar Jackson in the third round like last year. There's no guarantee that he's actually going to be the number one. or uh, and There's no guarantee with anybody, but I'm saying we've seen the history of the hit rate of early round quarterbacks, and they're, they're not necessarily that safe. Meanwhile, Travis Kelsey has been basically the safest player in fantasy football for the past five years. And so I move him up. I w in a 10-teamer, probably pick 105, and you could even talk me into him at pick 104. Uh, I think I, if I was really in it, I would take Zeke over Travis Kelsey, but that is, that's a fair argument and it, one that I'm, I'm fine. If you want to take Kelsey right there to, to have the advantage, where quarterback, the depth is massive. And when there's only 10, court, 10 starting quarterbacks, you have even more players on the waiver wire to choose from for matchup streaming should you miss on your quarterback. All right, let's move forward to this question from Philip. Hi. Oh, is he a poet? I'm from Austria. Oh, bonjour. Makes a clarity point here that says it's not Germany. Oh, okay. Bonjour then. I heard Australia. So, <laughs> and that is also not Germany, just in case people are curious. Right. Uh, big fan of the podcast. Have a question regarding the management of our league. How many commissioners do you recommend to have in a fantasy football league? Currently, we have only one, and the dude is a very lazy one. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> maybe we can discuss leadership in leagues, uh, sure. co-commissioners. Do you have a treasurer? If you deal with a money league, um, somebody that organizes hangouts. I have found that in a lot of our leagues, I mean, pretty much every league we've ever been in it, there's a commish. There's, there's, there's one main commission. That's how it starts. But over time, the leagues that we've been in longer, there tends to be like, Hey, let's give commish powers to another person or another person. Um, just so that transactions can get uh, made a little bit easier. I have no problem adding another person, especially maybe this person is super lazy and maybe he's the worst or maybe he's just super busy and you can help him by adding another. I know, uh, Andy, you used to be the commish uh, in the League of Record and you have handed most of those duties off just because we've been busy. Um, and I, I, th I think that's a, a good solution for any league that is struggling with like, Look, if you're frustrated with the commissioner because of like transactions and and things that aren't there's not enough being done when you think it should be, I'm guessing that the commissioner would welcome another commissioner as well. It's not negative to them. Yeah, and I think you can also develop non-commissioner positions for people where you know, maybe somebody is doing weekly reviews of the games that took place, which is really fun. Like the more responsibility that individuals have in your league, the more buy-in there will be, the more draft day will be exciting. So, you know, that's the direction I think I'd be happy to go. We've got a guy who always does the write-ups post-draft. Oh, I'm excited for that. I am year. too. I mean, those those are fantastic. Even though I know I've already drafted a great team. You've already locked it up. Tomorrow. My, my question for Philip is, does your league commish, is, would he write into a fantasy football show? Like, is he that passionate? Because Philip here... Sounds like the commish. Philip, you need to look in the mirror and say it's time. It's Philip time. Climb those milk crates to the top, brother. But also, when but you're also doing stay that, safe. Yes, squat. Got to get low. You low gotta center bend, of gravity. Bend the knees. Yeah. I thought you were just going to start tying in koala bears and kangaroos and... Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, you oh, hug, that, <laughs> hug that tree and go to sleep, brother. Rosie McNuggs <laughs> from Twitter. If you're in multiple redraft <laughs> leagues... I'm just pressing forward. Okay. If you're in multiple redraft leagues, do you put all your eggs in one basket and target the same guys you're high on or try to get them on one team and then draft different players in other leagues? So had a similar question on the footcast this past week. Basically, the the deal is, is if you're really – if you know who your guys are, right? We had our My Guys show. If you know who your guys are, do you hedge or do you draft them everywhere? Because you could be wrong. If I'm in a couple of leagues and I draft Tyler Lockett when I'm in the fifth round because I think he's the best pick there, I'm going to do it in both of my leagues. I'm going to do it in all three of my leagues if I think that that's what the value is personally. But it really is a matter of 
at, at some point for certain fantasy players, it, it, this becomes a portfolio situation. This becomes a uh, you're going to pretty much have half of the league rostered and every single week you're going to be playing uh, every player because you're rooting in so for many... every player. Exactly. And in that case, it's probably wise to diversify your assets and uh, make sure that one injury, you can love a player all you want, but we're, you, you don't have a hundred percent hit rate on being right. Um, it's, and it's funny. Cause I'm starting to think of it in the terms of like the stock market, when people think they they like a company, right? Exactly. And let's say I you, like the stock. You got you know you got twenty thousand dollars to invest. If you put all, all twenty thousand in the stock you love, that is maximum glory. That's maximum winnings, unless you're wrong. Mm -hmm. But it's also really hard for me. Like my psychology is, if I'm right about that one guy I love, and I didn't take him in two other three other leagues, I'm so stupid. Like that potential regret means that I'm a guy who takes my guys. I have found that when I care about just a few leagues, I don't have as much fun when I'm rooting for all these random situations where it's like, I want this guy to do good and bad, and I need this guy. You know, it's like I, I really like having my guys and watching football and rooting for the, the same core. What about you, Mike? I preferred the same guys, it, as long as you're not – it, as long as you're taking what the draft is giving you and you're not being overly aggressive to target the same exact players, I'd prefer to have similar makeups. <laughs> I like this question from, well, this is a Twitter question from H.E. Pennypacker. What? Uh, tell me more about your league record draft and how do you shift your strategy when your league mates <laughs> hear you talk on the reg? Also... Any league members that you want to put on blast? So, oh, I mean, it's good. All of them. It's good timing with us having our league of record draft. I believe this is year eleven, something like that. Wow, and three out of eleven times I've won. Right, compared to only two out of eleven for me. And then Jason, I got one. I got um, one. <laughs> you know, it's amazing because you you drove the bus over me. And then I just kind of hopped in, too, and I was you, like... You judo through the yeah. bus right away, was man. Like, it was very impressive. Harness the energy. Let's not I, focus on my deficiencies. Right. <laughs> let's focus on the Dynasty League, you know, where we've got four. Uh, the, que right. the question was about the League of Record, good sir. Mm. So, okay. our League of Record, we've talked about kind of how it's formulated. It's a three-keeper league, and there's pre-draft trading. There's mid-draft trading that takes place mm -hmm. oftentimes. It is definitely a, I would say, a hurdle to overcome that everyone hears the players we like. I mean, literally the other day, I talked up Corey Davis a day after I had made an offer about Corey Davis, and I received a text right after the show that said, the price on Corey <laughs> Davis just went up. <laughs> it was like an actual penalty text. So, uh, but I, I wouldn't say that we're too, like overcome no, by that. I don't no, think the, you have to change that much because while they know what we're going to do, so you know that a few times in the draft, right before you pick, your guy is going to get taken. It's just it's going to happen. But they're all independent minds, and they like players more than we like players, and they so they draft their guys. Yeah, and, and, and this is a perfect example of what we always say to stay water. Um, we We just... We do what is best at the time that the pick comes to us. And we know, you know, that it's really irrelevant. Everything that we like and that other people know we like is out the window once the draft starts. You just do your best every time you're on the clock and, and pay attention to what rounds are right ahead of you. You're, and You're telling me neither of you guys are wincing when Tyler Lockett goes around early on Sunday? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll throw something at someone. I'll, I'll feel pain. <laughs> I do yes. have one follow-up question here because, I mean, I would just like to know. When are you taking Trey Lance, Mike? <laughs> like when? Because I well, that Pandora's box has been just ripped open now that you took him in the seventh freaking round I'm, in our mock draft. It's all a setup just to get you tilted. I want to see second round Trey Lance in the upcoming draft because you're afraid. That's the goal. All right, uh, let's go. Also, with my first pick, uh, so I, you better take him in the first round, Andy. I mocked him in the sixth round in our uh, League of Record oh, mock draft. nice. Thank you for the Wait, What do you mean in your League of Record mock draft? Are we, uh, what do you mean? Who's we? 
Who uh, did the league of record mock draft? Myself and my co-owner. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just thought there were other people from the league that were getting in on this. Oh, yeah. Were you a part of this, uh, Al? I was not. No, oh, of course not. Mm. He's the enemy. We used mm. to mock together. Mm -hmm. Now we just mock each other. Uh, website question from Bumpkins McChillingsworth. <laughs> what are these names? You, you producers uh, found some special individuals some with gems. these questions. Uh, what is your preferred setup while drafting? Is it pen and paper? Is it printed out rankings? Is it a mobile app? Is it a laptop? Is it a dry erase board? Is it flashcards? Is it quill and ink? It, you, for oh. me, oh, quill and ink, that's a that's a power move. That's only for my trade offers. <laughs> oh, I send yeah. The, I send those. Uh, I actually send them with an owl. You Dearest get a bunch of scrolls, sir. and mm -hmm. you write your trade on a scroll. If it's it not sealed, it's not a real offer. No, you got to oh, get the wax seal of yeah. your team's. Your team's crest. That's right. Um <laughs> You know, honestly, how stark has a trade for me? <laughs> um, I've always enjoyed pen and paper. I really have printing out the cheat sheet, just having it to where I can glance at everything as at a whole. It's it's very very easy. But um, the last two years, my my preferred method, what I have really made the transition transition to, is the app on the iPad. Um, I know, you know, if you've got an iPad, you might have used the app on your phone and you've used the ultimate draft kit on the web, uh, but maybe you haven't actually downloaded the app on your iPad. It's glorious. You put it in landscape. You can see all the blurbs. You could see all the, uh, the write-ups and the rankings, all your markings, and you can just so quickly and easily mark players as drafted, get them out of the way, see who's left, scroll it easily. Like it's, it's outstanding. So e even as somebody that's kind of getting like just centimeters from 40 years old, you have made the move from pen and paper to like a more advanced technology. That's right. I'm an advanced uh, technology guy. Okay. Impressive. I take the tech, uh, which I've, even before we had our app and things, I before the footballers even started, I was, I was in a spreadsheet because the pen and paper does not have Apple F. And mm. that's frustrating when you're like, wait, who? They said who? And then you got to track them down, scribble them out, and by then – that maybe that that could have cost you an extra twenty seconds, and when when the when the bullets are flying in the draft, that's <laughs> no, that's, that's a lot of time. That's fair. And hear hear what we aren't saying, which is we are not just using the ADP in a uh, you know in, in your draft platform to just look at who's at the top and pick one of the top three guys. That is literally the worst way you can draft. I. I don't know if it would be a real draft for me if I don't have a headache from Sharpie by the sixth. You are a pen and round. paper man. He brings the two inch Sharpie, the real thick one. Yeah. His rocking chair. Yeah, if I'm not staying in the desk beneath the paper, <laughs> I can't wait. One year, he's not going to tell us about it, and he's just going to be so proud of his pen and paper. And those readers, they're going to come out of the pocket. Oh no! <laughs> and he's gonna I'm going to pull the readers out. <laughs> you know you are. They're going to be sitting right on the tip of your nose, all low. I kind of like the visual image of that guy <laughs> drafting. I like. Am I in a rocking chair? Yo, for yeah, sure you are in a rocking chair. Oh man! And but, the whole, probably the, have a pipe. And at the, some point. Brooks just messaged me about a rocking chair the second I said it. So and the whole entire time. Like, Remember the draft from 2013? Well, you guys got him a rocking chair, didn't you? We, we did. Arian yeah. Foster. <laughs> uh, I'm sad to say that after several years of good use, that rocking chair. Oh no! It's pretty dilapidated. The oh, sun. That's great. The news. sun has. So I. That's great news because I got another birthday. Yeah, yep. because now I know what to get you for your next birthday. So easy. Not going to argue with you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look, I want to rock. Yeah, it's it's great. It's a great time. Um, okay, Twitter. Joe Batung says, I have a 10th. Uh, I have the 10th pick in a half PPR league. Would I be nuts to go top tier wideouts back to back in the first two rounds? So 10th pick, maybe you end up going Tyreek and then you come back and you got yourself a what? You got a Diggs. Uh, Jefferson Ridley. Yeah, Ridley. You could... Any you know between Hopkins, Diggs, uh, Tyreek, and Devonte Adams, you could have two of those four rather easily. And no, you're not nuts at all to do that strategy. Now uh, we are much more of the robust running back uh, theory on this show. That's how we personally draft. I love having two strong running backs, and uh, because I feel like there's a lot of talent at wide receiver, you can find that much much easier. But there is. 
an argument to be made um, for the strategy of taking two of those elites at the back of the first. Uh, I think the best argument is to understand that compare to the running backs that you're going to get there versus let's say that that person at the at the 101 has the you know the Christian McCaffrey and Clyde Edwards Alaire stack we've seen a lot of it your running backs at the end of the first aren't going to be as good they're just not go so now in the third round that first player is getting better players than you are while having better running backs than you have you're playing catch up at that point um so i that's the one place where i tend to often go either zero rb or like a modified one stud running running back and a bunch of wide receivers because i don't want to play catch up i want to build an elite lineup and if you're grabbing a kelsey uh, a, a hopkins hill Diggs, Devonte adams those are elite players Mike, uh, a lot of people this weekend are going to be in salary cap slash auction drafts. Mm -hmm. Frank writes in and says, in a, in a salary cap auction draft, would you rather spend big on two or three elite players or get a whole team of middle-tier players? Now, I, I'm the stars and scrubs when it comes to that drafting format. It's the, the advantage of having multiple first-round picks. So think about it. another way to, to imagine it is okay if i were in a a snake draft would i trade you know like my my uh fourth fifth and sixth round picks would i trade those for another first of course you would. and my answer is yeah absolutely please sign me up and that's essentially what you're you're doing and there's there's values all over the place like i've i don't know that i've left a draft in this format without my quarterback being one point or one dollar like that's you can get valuable players at, at positions f for the cheap so i go up i go stars and scrubs all right uh question from steven in orlando writes in and, and i'll broaden it a little bit but basically what are you doing with covid this year mike mm. just had a guest appearance on another podcast that was one of the questions. Like, are you? Do you have a database of vaccination status? Do how are you paying attention to the COVID situation in the NFL? What is your approach? Does it impact your draft? Does it impact the week to week? For the most part, it doesn't. There's it's it's out of our control, and there isn't a database. There is no. You can have guesses, and probably in your local team, you might have uh, strong indications as to who has been vaxxed, who is, and who's. This way or that way, outside of Cole Beasley, we all know. Of course, yes. Um, but the reality is, because we don't know that, we don't know you, – you can't predict it. The only thing that you do for COVID is, as a league, you say, okay, what are we going to do rules-wise for – are are we going to choose to do something different? Are we going to add IR spl spots and allow COVID uh, positives – or COVID protocol, you know, yeah. people just place their, whether they're positive or not, to be placed on that IR, we, which we recommend. That's what we would do as yeah, a show. And, and sleep, yes. Sleeper has separate options for that if you're playing on Sleeper, where you can allow that type of player, a COVID IR, onto your IR spot. And yeah. la last year, because of the situation where, it, like, it was a it was a different situation last year for the NFL, and there was a greater possibility of cancellation for games. So we would have... We would set our starting lineup, and we would uh, dictate to the league, to the chat, say, if this game is canceled, this is the player I would have played, and then we will we we would update that you know, with the league. Uh, the commission would handle that, but I don't foresee cancellations being an issue this year. You're going to have guys go on the COVID the, IR, the, the COVID IR, but I don't think cancellations are going to be and I'll that happening this year. I'll throw a couple things out. One is that the NFL just recently changed their vaccinated testing policy from 14 days to every seven days, which is pretty important, I think, for the potential for team outbreak situations to happen. And I also believe, and I don't want to, like, don't make sure you vet this, but I think if you are, if you're vaccinated and you end up on COVID IR, there's a five day turnaround. So there is the potential that you could have something go south early in the week. And that player may end up being able to come off and play on Sunday. We'll obviously be giving you information each and every week mm -hmm. in the news on every show, uh, and do your you know the league professes to have a very high vaccination rate overall in terms of on-field players, personnel, 
across the board. So um, otherwise, it's kind of outside your control. You have to just have contingencies on how to deal with the unknown. Yeah, it's more in season than the draft strategy. The draft strategy, of, you're probably getting a little too galaxy brain if you think you can um, right. figure out have, what's going to happen in the future when you're at your draft. But we do have the antibody levels of each player on the player profiles on the website. Well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> how did Brooks, how'd you get all their blood? Money. Oh. Yeah. What you, do you mean? You, you didn't do anything with his level of money. When you're a trillionaire, you'd be surprised. <laughs> did you guys see? Did you guys see that Tony Hawk has got like yeah, these, yeah, these limited edition skateboards coming out where they like drew? They drew like a vial of his blood and mixed it in the paint. Mm hmm. And then they're selling these like so you're like buying skateboards with his DNA in it. Wow. What are your thoughts, Jason? My thoughts are <laughs> that's ridiculous. Okay. And would it would it be cool if you were like into Tony Hawk to have some of his blood? So I'm not sure. A lock of his hair. I'm not sure. Like I'm not into Tony Hawk. I was never into skating. I didn't play the game. But I obviously you didn't play Tony Hawk Pro I, Skater. I didn't. I know bro. I missed out. I know it. Oh I know my it. goodness! He just, he just dropped a bro on but you. But like, let's say it was Jim Carrey, right? And it was a, a prop from a movie. Or, I'm just saying someone like or, I really care about. Or Jim Carrey's blood. You know? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm not sure that that makes that object better or, or, or worse. Creepier. Like I've got. I have his blood. What celebrity's blood do you want? It's a simple <laughs> question. Well, Ryan Reynolds, if it meant I could like. <laughs> You know, do oh, no. you know, get some genetic enhancements my way. He would get the blood and then he'd like infuse it. What's uh like in Silicon Valley? What's the oh yeah, yeah, what's the price on one of these skateboards? Oh, you're yeah. in? No. I'm just I'm very willing to sell my blood. Could that I mean let me just like, throw this out this, there. If this is a, a financial way that I could go, that I just mm -hmm. smear some of my blood on stuff. Could you I'm in. Could you frame Tony Hawk for a crime at this point? Because Ooh. of the DNA? Oh. Tony Hawk is popping up all over the country, committing all sorts of capers. <laughs> this yeah. man's everywhere. He's everywhere. Um, all the crimes are with the skateboard, though. <laughs> they're, all, they're all committed with the skateboard. He was pulling off a gnarly 50-50, <laughs> and he snatched a purse. <laughs> um, this is the Tony Hawk hour. Uh, Twitter question from Jackson Longin. In a full PPR with three wide receivers and two flex, is it crazy to take Devontae Adams with the third overall pick Ooh. over Alvin Kamara? Um, we just did the sleeper bowl draft, which yeah. was a three wide receiver league, which if you were watching from home, there were some differences in the way players are drafted. Yeah, we ended up taking Hopkins Early. earlier than uh, you know I normally would. It crazy but i give it, you credit mike for that call there thank you it it's and we kind of talked about this a little bit of the, like would you take the wide receivers at the end and it's no it's not crazy but i wouldn't change my philosophy in the top three i would still take alvin Kamara, but if you want to in a because a ppr three wide receiver two flex two flex this full this, ppr this is where you can really cash in on going with a hero RB or a zero yes. RB approach. So, yeah, I mean, I, I agree completely. If, if they wrote in and said, is it crazy to take him with the fourth overall pick? I'm no, no, it isn't. That third is just so hard in yeah. a full PPR, not, not Camara to not take Camara. I, I don't, I don't think it's like over a, Henry. I don't sure. think. Oh yeah. I don't think it's a crime here, but I wouldn't it's not do a it. Tony the Hawk three. level. No, <laughs> no, the DNA. Uh, okay, uh, Steve Boots writes in from Twitter. Steve Boots? Uh, I've always drafted – he only wears flip-flops. It sucks. Uh, I've always drafted quarterback and tight end as late as possible, but I don't think that strategy is as effective this year. How do I know when the right time to pull the trigger is on these positions? Hopefully you've been along for the ride this offseason. You've kind of seen our uh, – 2021 ideology, at least when it comes to the tight end position, which is at, at the right appropriate price, those top three tight ends are worth their weight in gold. And you're monitoring the the rest of the league, see who has a tight end, because uh, that you know that starts the timer of you know, okay, we're we're sh we're shrinking the the tier, find the tier of tight end that you're willing to go in on, and when that bucket that that tier of of similar. Uh, tight ends for their projections 
when that bucket's about to empty, that's when you grab one. Yeah, and, and regarding quarterback, I would actually agree that this year feels a little different than in previous years. Last year, the year before, the year before, there's pretty much been 20 quarterbacks I'm happy with, uh, where which means my quarterback was like the last right, pick yeah. of my draft almost everywhere. And now there really seems to be that last tier with, that has – like Tom Brady, Ryan Tannehill, Jalen Hurts, um, and then I, and then I would throw in the super late. Granted, not super late anymore with you two insane fellas, uh, but Lance and Fields um, that that are usually super late. But outside of that, I, I I feel like the quarterbacks at the top, those top six, seven, eight guys, they really do feel separate to me than the than the Matt Ryans and the Kirk Cousins and those types were in years past because there's so many more rushing quarterbacks this year. I feel like it's difficult for me to want one of those meh quarterbacks. And if you're going to punt, uh, I was on yesterday's mock draft, I ended up having to punt, and, but I was happy. By the by the outcome at the end, I, I, I grabbed uh, Matt Ryan because yes. his, his week one matchup is and juicy. Justin Fields. And then I got Justin Fields. So if you're able to – if you run out of those – those quarterbacks to draft, take someone who has a, a good opening season schedule, get Trey Lance, get Justin Fields. Uh, that, that's the way I would approach it. Honestly, there might not be a bigger payoff than the very late in draft double quarterback situation when the quarterbacks you're picking are players you like to have a breakout season. Does that make sense? Where that first week, if you – Catch one. Like the goal of late round quarterback is not to stream all year long. Correct. It's to find the guy, the Josh Allen of years past, the late round quarterback that is your starter. So in week one, if 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 it's Justin Fields out there, let's just say he's the starter, or maybe you had taken Zach Wilson there, what do you know? Maybe you end up finding one at that point in the draft and you can cut the other one and go pick up. It's not like you're not trying to sign somebody off the waiver wire in week one. Right. Everybody's competing there, so – a reminder, the Megalobowl is available right now. You can go take part, megalobowl.com. Jason, uh, there are a lot of folks inside of the Megalobowl, over 9,000. Mm -hmm. oh, and Guinness 9, did reach 000. out. Guinness did reach out. That is yes. true. Uh, maybe we will actually stamp this thing officially the largest fantasy football league in the world, which it is, but we don't have the stamp. Um, and Jason, that's our goal. What is the Megala Bowl? The Megala Bowl is an incredible fantasy football league where there are thousands of people playing in 12 team leagues. So it's a normal league. There are trades, there are waiver wires. It's a just a regular league like you're used to with ballers preferred scoring where all the foot clan is facing off against each other and at the end of the year the playoffs are kind of points based the top three from each league goes and plays each other and the winner will get in our listener league next year the winner last year is in this year and it's exciting times it really you want to prove you're the best fantasy football player and how do you spell megalobowl you can actually spell megalobowl different ways <laughs> um, because it should be Megalobowl because that's how the shark, a Megalodon, is yes. spelled. But nobody says that. They say Megalobowl. So we've got both domains. <laughs> you can go Mega, M-E-G-A-L-A-B-O-W-L, or you can go O, whichever you prefer. I like that you emphasize you could go Mega La. <laughs> yeah. Because that's where the, the actual letter is different. Yeah, it's not is. in Mega. No, I know. But that's soup. And easy so to the, spell. the shark is large and the league is large, and that's the tie-in. That's right. Okay. That's right. That's why we we also have the megalodon episode uh, coming out. Mega, right Mega, megalodon. I want to be clear, megalodon. Even though the domain is megalobowl.com, the producers chose not to put that on the slide. Right. It's super confusing if you're on YouTube. YouTube. He has Thank a you. note. He has a sticky note to mm -hmm. fix it over yeah, there. I it, do. It I is do. not fixed. You can also go to jointhefoot.com if you want to be confused. Oh, um, but gracious. it does work there. Shut so it down. You can go sign up. Shut I it attempted down. to make him like go right. Oh, okay. He sw now he's switching the slide. <laughs> oh, he switched it to ultimatedraftkit.com, <laughs> which is also a great thing. Oh, I shut mean, it down. I guess that means we got to shut this thing down. Bonus episode is over. Enjoy Bonus. your drafts. I know we're going to enjoy ours, and we'll be back on Monday. we got bold predictions next week. Oh, you don't want to miss it. Oh, goodbye. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.